Welcome everyone. In today's webinar on back to basics, general concept of metal handling. My name is Adarsh and I'm, ex I'm excited to be your host and speaker for 43rd webinar in our Godrej storage and handling knowledge series. I am working as a product manager in Godrej and Boys metal handling division. Before I start, let's revisit the core purpose of our Godrej storage and handling knowledge sharing platform tailored specifically for the intro logistic field. This, plat this platform exemplifies the Godrej way of giving back to society and the industry by sharing the knowledge we have gathered over the past six decades. It's our way of contributing and sharing our expertise and experience with those who can benefit from it. We are thrilled to share that the response to our platform has been overwhelmingly positive. This warm reception has been a tremendous source of motivation encouraging us to continue this initiative. Today, we are proud to be in the fourth year of this knowledge sharing series dedicated to furthering interlogistic understanding and advancement. Through this platform, we strive to foster a collaborative space where expert professionals and enthusiasts can come together, exchange ideas, and collectively raise the bar for interlogistic practices. We believe that knowledge is power and by sharing it freely, we empower individuals and organizations to achieve operational excellence and contribute to the uh, industry's overall growth. Today, we will unravel the intricate web of material handling concept, beginning with a detailed examination of various types of material handling equipment. Our discussion will extend to attachment, illuminating how these specialized additions enhance the versatility and functionality of the handling equipment. Next, we will immerse ourselves into the practical application of material handling within warehouses environment and we'll also have detailed discussion on the racking storage. As we navigate through this webinar, we won't just stretch the surface. We will dive into the parameters of governing equipment selection. So fasten your seat belts as we embark on this enlightening journey, unraveling the nuances of the material handling that define the landscape of modern industrial logistics. Before I move on, I would request everyone to put in their question in the chat box on the top right of your screen. We shall try to answer them straight away or toward the end of the session. Please do not forget to write your name in the box above the Q&A section. This will help us to get back to you after the webinar in case we miss your question. So uh, let's unpack the first topic of our discussion that is type of metal handling equipment. Uh, first type is counterbalance forklift truck. Categorized uh, by, the, by their unique weight distribution that counteracts the load being lifted, these trucks offers a versatile and uh, efficient solution for navigating the demand of manufacturing facilities and distribution centers. With a focus on stability and balance, counterbalance forklift trucks provide a reliable and essential foundation for the seamless flow of goods in diverse operational settings, showcasing their pivotal role in the world of modern logistics. So if we talk about categories, then there are diesel forklift ranging from 1.5 to 25 tons, then electric forklift ranging from 0.8 to 0.8 to 5 tons, and then some special uh, application forklifts. Moving on, uh, here we can see some application of diesel, uh, diesel uh, forklift with various attachment for container stuffing and roll handling applications. Uh, moving on, uh, there are multiple attachment which can be used in case of forklift. So first one is hydraulic shovel. Hydraulic shovel is for handling and transporting bulk material, chips, gravel or sand with a forklift truck. Drop bottom boxes. Uh, drop bottom boxes is basically used uh, where a load of parts, casting, bulk materials, nuts and bolts, scrap, trash, waste and sweeping must be dumped from the drop bottom boxes. Paper roll clamps is suitable for mills and shippers of large rolls of packaging paper of all types. A crane hook allows the equipment to operate as lifting cranes. Uh, if you talk about the bail clamp, bail clamp is for movement of non palletized load. For a uh, furnace stalker, furnace uh, stalker is basically breaking or stocking the slag in, uh, inside the furnace. And the drum handler is to pick up 
move or uh, rotate stack rack or transport your drums so uh, moving on there are some other attachment to carry different different types of load here we can see the images and uh, here we can see some uh, two more application with uh, uh, brick handling and coil handling attachment so uh, moving on to uh, counterbalance electric forklift uh, basically a uh, counterbalance electric forklift are powered by electric batteries making them environmentally friendly and suitable for indoor use due to their low emission these forklift are commonly used in warehouses manufacturing facilities and distribution centers their design provides stability allowing them to lift and move loads efficiently uh, moving on to warehouse trucks uh the first one in the category of warehouse trucks is hand pallet trucks uh hand pallet trucks if you talk about the hand pallet trucks uh it is basically designed for use of uh, ease of use these uh ma manually operated uh trucks features a hydraulic pump mechanism that allows user to lift and move palletized load with minimal physical effort uh second one is powered pallet truck so powered pallet truck represent a significant advancement in material handling technology unlike its manual counterpart the powered pallet truck is equipped with an electric motor that assist in moving and lifting palletized load uh, if you talk about stacker stacker is uh, designed for vertical movement of palletized load within a uh, warehouse or uh, storage facility it typically consists of box or a platform that can be raised and lowered allowing for efficient stacking uh and retrieval of goods at varying heights uh next one is tow trucks tow trucks in the context of uh, material handling refers to a vehicle designed for the transportation of multiple trailers or carts within a facility uh if we talk about the reach trucks a uh, reach truck is a specialized type of forklift designed for narrow aisle warehouse environments it features a unique mast and outrigger design that enables the vehicle to extend its uh, fox and lift load to significant heights while maintaining stability the next one is articulated trucks articulated truck allows you to store more goods in the same aisle width by 50% compared to counterbalance forklift and 30% compared to the reach trucks it can transfer load from lorry to rack and rack to lorry in a single handling operation this help boost the boost the productivity and efficiency of the operator and for this very reason we call it a uh, multi purpose workhouse so moving on here we can see some practical application of the tow truck uh, excuse me so uh moving ahead here we can see some practical application of reach truck how operator is operating the reach truck for uh picking up the pallets and then uh moving ahead now uh moving on to typical uh material handling application in a warehouse so uh these are the some applications we will discuss about it one by one so first one is a uh, docking operation docking operation in logistic and transportation refer to the process of unloading and unloading goods at a dock or loading bay so this operation typically involves aligning a truck or container with a designated loading or unloading area at a warehouse distribution center or shipping facility so here we can see some images of the docking operation that is currently going on and uh, then moving on to the recommended equipment for the docking operation so the first one is hand pallet truck and power pallet truck and uh, three and four four wheeled uh, counter balance truck we have already discussed about these three and then the dock levelers so if you talk about the dock levelers dock levelers is basically height adjustable platform used as a bridge between dock and truck operated via hydraulic powered system excuse me so moving ahead uh talking about the transportation from docking staging area to racking area <coughs> sorry 
moving on to recommended equipment for transportation from docking staging area to racking area first one is powered pallet truck we have already discussed about it and then lower level and double pallet stickers are there two tractors are there pedestrian rider uh, stacker are there standard counterbalance forklift we have already discussed <coughs> sorry we have already discussed about these equipment in early slides so uh, moving on to racking storage here we can see uh, the image where the racking storage uh, are mentioned in a warehouse so <coughs> racking storage system are commonly used for efficient and organized storage in warehouse or industrial settings they consist of shelves or pallets arranged in a structured framework so uh, we will now talk about typical aisle width in a racking storage system with equipment selection considering pallet size of 800 mm uh, wide and 1200 mm length so for a uh, very narrow aisle width 1.5 meter to 2 meter tsp means turret stock picker and articulated forklift will be recommended for aisle width of 2.4 meter to 2.8 meter stackers will be uh, recommended and for aisle width of 2.7 meter to 3 meter reach truck will be recommended for aisle width greater than 3.5 meter forklift will be recommended so uh, moving ahead moving uh, on to recommended uh, equipment for racking storage uh, first one is moving mast reach truck a uh, moving mast reach truck uh, uses a hydraulic system which allows the entire mast to reach forward this uh, type of reach forklift is more common and are suited for manure in uh, narrow aisle as well as heavy duty applications uh second one is uh, moving carriage reach trucks so uh, there are two types of uh, in uh, moving carriage reach trucks there are two types uh, first one is single deep and uh, second one is double deep so uh, third one is a uh, stacker a stacker is designed for vertical movement of palletized load within a warehouse or storage facility it typically consists of forks or a platform that can be raised and lowered allowing for efficient stacking and retrieval of goods at varying heights and we have already discussed about tow tractor stand up counter balance forklift and articulated forklift so uh, the last one is man up turret stock picker which is basically forklift which features a stronger mast higher reach and narrow footprint allowing you to make the most of your storage space <laughs> sorry uh one second <clears throat> sorry so uh if you talk about a uh, uh, main parameter for selecting equipment for a uh, racking storage so uh selecting racking storage equipment involves considering several critical parameter to ensure optimal efficiency and safety the first one is type of pallet especially for stackers the dimension weight and design of pallets you are crucial you use are crucial uh, different uh, storage equipment may be required based on the pallet types such as selective pallet racks drive in racks and push back racks the second one is aisle space so aisle width is a crucial factor narrow aisle configuration maximize storage density but require specialized equipment like narrow aisle forklifts third one is maximum fork height so the height to which your forklift or stacker needs to reach is vital this determines the type of equipment and rack height compatibility the second one is uh, derated capacity understanding the load bearing capacity of the storage equipment and ensuring that it aligns with your operational requirement is essential uh, the second point is uh, collapse height 
This refers to the height of uh, height of the storage equipment when not in use. It's important for assessing the overall space utilization within your facility. Overall raised height. Knowing how the uh, high the equipment can lift load is crucial for selecting racks that can be accommodate their required vertical storage space. Throughput is basically considering the volume of goods you need to move in and out of storage daily. High uh, throughput operation may be required specialized equipment or layout configuration to maintain efficiency. So uh, moving ahead, uh, here we can see a layout of a warehouse. So I will show you with a pointer. So basically what need to be noted here is uh, there are underpass way to make where uh, where uh, we will uh, make the vehicle movement very easier. So it means if any vehicle is in the mid of the aisle space, then it not need to go to the corner for going to the next aisle. It can be passed through this un underpass and this is very uh, this is very useful for increasing the productivity and safety and also manpower can uh, use this uh, 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 underpass for the movement. So moving ahead. Uh, basically uh, what we can see here here we can see the uh, some dimensions like aisle space here we can see the aisle space as 2100 mm. And where we can see the orange marked at underpass and the last level we can see here to identify the maximum pocket. So basically we used to add 200 mm uh, in the in this last level height to cal calculate the maximum pocket so that uh, a minimum clearance should be there. And uh, we can see here maximum weight that is 1000 kg uh, and based on these parameters we will select the equipment. So uh, main parameter for selecting equipment for uh, racking storage. There are two uh, more types. So uh, first one is move, uh, moving on to for open type pallet uh, for cover stacker is recommended and for uh, closed type pallet wide straddle stacker is recommended. I will explain this in next few slides. So here uh, what we can notice is uh, we can notice the position of the straddle entry in open type pallet. It is entering inside the pallet space and in closed pallet. It is entering from the outside pallet. So uh, moving on. So this will happen if we use the fork over stacker for a uh, closed type pallet. This will strike in that. So basically this is showing the dimension of inside straddle width in comparison to uh, pallet width. And then here we will talk about the effect of pallet width on rack elevation. So if we, uh, the pallet width is greater than the inside straddle width, then the clearance between the top of the pallet and the bottom of the rack should be at least 250 mm for the smoother movement. Otherwise it will be striked. So uh, moving ahead. Here we can see uh, the case of single deep and double deep racking. In single deep racking, outrigger will not enter inside the pallet and only mast will move while in double deep racking. Outrigger will be entered into the pallet space. So clearance between the beam, bottom of the beam and the ground is required in case of double deep racking. So uh, in double deep application following changes are incorporated in the rack and drawing bottom beam at a height of 300 mm from ground, ground is highly recommended and beam span must be calculated as per the straddle width of pantograph restructure. So uh, basically this uh, slide is showing the different equipment for different aisle width articulated uh, pocket for the lesser space from left to right and then the restruck for the wider and then uh, the counterbalance pocket for the much wider aisle. So basically we uh, used to select the equipment based on the aisle width. So here you can see the difference from left to right, the difference between the aisle space and the equipments. Uh, 
uh here uh, one interesting thing about the articulated forklift we will talk about so in case of articulated uh, forklift racking system uh, must have end aisle dimension of at least 750 to 850 mm so that the smooth articulation can be done while placing or lifting the pallet at the corner of the racking so basically when the uh, articulated forklift will put or lift the pallet at, uh, from the corner of the racking then if the this uh, 75 8 or 850 mm uh, face will is not there then it will strike on the wall so it is uh, highly recommended in case of articulated forklift uh moving on to drive in racking system so a drive in uh, drive in racking system is basically a type of warehouse storage solution where pallets are storage stored on rails that run the depth of the storage lanes forklift can drive into these lanes to assess and retrieve pallets it's a space efficient option for bulk storage of homogeneous product with low turnover so uh, moving on on to next tracking system that is shuttle tracking system a uh, shuttle racking system is a high density storage solution that uses automated shuttle vehicle to move and position pallets within the rack these shuttles run on the guide rails and can lift and carry pallets to designated locations uh, here we can see the radio shuttle uh, this uh, system is efficient for both uh, first in first out and last in first out basically we used to call it fifo or lifo uh, inventory management offering increased storage capacity and faster throughput compared to the traditional systems so uh, moving on shelving so basically shelving uh, refers to the storage structure composed of shelves or racks des designed to organize and store goods it comes in various forms includes bot bot uh, boltless uh, shelving pallet racks and cantilever racks so uh, moving ahead uh, here are the some images of uh, shelving storage shelving system help optimize uh, optimize warehouse spaces improve inventory management and facilitate uh, easy access to items factors like load capacity storage density and accessibility are considered when choosing the appropriate shelving for uh, a warehouse based on the specific needs of the stored goods so uh, here we can see uh, we will see a person is trying to pick a order by using different different equipment i will play a video here Second. So what uh, we will see here that a person will try to pick a order by using different different equipment. So we can easily uh, easily identify the risk involved. Here you can see the falling of the part, and now he is using the staircase model. So while getting lowered, so definitely you can. Uh, see the you can see the danger here. He has fallen with the parts, and now he is using the A type ladder to pick the load. And then uh, you can all easily see here the water is are involved. And uh, yes, uh, it definitely it's not ergonomically correct. Now he has fallen. Now, now uh, finally, a uh, work assist vehicle. Now he is using a work assist vehicle. We used to call it a wave. We can see the safety and productivity standard with work assist vehicle. We will discuss discuss about it further. Here you can see the how safely he can work by using this wave equipment. So moving on. order picking order picking is critical process in warehousing and fulfillment fulfillment involving the selection and gathering of items 
uh, from inventory to fulfill customer orders. So uh, moving on, there are various types of order picker like low level, uh, mid level, high level based on the level of requirement. So these equipment will be used and uh, uh, one is low level come pallet stacking order picker. We have already discussed about man up TSP. TSP means the turret, order, turret, turret stock picker. And now we will talk about the wave that we have seen the uh, video earlier in the earlier side slide. So uh, I will tell you the what is uh, what the wave is. So the work assist vehicle. Work assist vehicle is a type of metal handling equipment designed to assist workers in tasks like order picking and shelving storage. These vehicles are often compact and maneuverable, allowing operators to assess cells efficiently. They might have features such as elevated platforms or adjustable forks to facilitate reaching higher shelves. Waves that is uh, waves can improve productivity in warehouses by enabling workers to move around and handle items more easily, especially in environments where shelving uh, storage is prevalent. So uh, moving ahead, uh, so here we can see some images of a uh, man of very narrow LTSP. With the TSP series turret truck, you can travel, lift and handle loads faster and run longer for maximum throughput. And uh, faster travel and quicker pivot and traverse speed ensures efficiency and in every cycle. So uh, in case of man up uh, uh, very narrow IL order picker, there is one uh, safety point to be considered while using this equipment. If the operator is required to enter the pallet when elevated, there must be a rails around the pallet. So it will be a safe, uh, safety feature that needs to be done in case the operator is required to enter the pallet when elevated. So uh, moving on to the bulk storage. Here we can see in the image the where the bulk storage is. Uh, we can see in the warehouse. So it is basically equipment and supplies stored in a large quantity, typically in a warehouse setting. Goods are often stored in original containers and without packaging. Uh, here we can see some images of bulk storage. The Primarily uh, benefits of using bulk storage in such cases are that it helps in cost reduction and better management of goods. Furthermore, with bulk storage, businesses can always rely on having enough stock in hand. Uh, moving ahead. So basically we can see here the uh, various types of metal handling equipment commonly used in bulk storage facilities. The first one is powered pallet truck. Uh, if we talk about the powered pallet truck, like uh, we can also call it PPT. So ideal for moving uh, palletized goods within a warehouse, especially for short distance. The second one is double pallet stacker. Useful for efficiently handling and transporting multiple pallets simultaneously optimizing storage space. If you talk about a stacker, a versatile lifting device for stacking and retrieving pallets in high uh, rack storage system or areas with limited space. Excuse me. Sorry. Counterbalance stacker. So. If we talk about counterbalance stacker, then it provides a stability and balance, making it suitable for uh, lifting and moving loads in areas where racks or where traditional forklift might have space limitations. Counterbalance forklift, uh, the last one is counterbalance forklift, uh, a versatile forklift designed to balance its load using its weight 
making it suitable for various warehouse tasks, including bulk storage. Uh, basically, what we need to consider is while selecting the right equipment depends on the factor, such as types of goods being stored, the layout of the storage facility, and the uh, specific operational requirement. It's essential to assess these factors to determine the most suitable equipment for efficient and safe bulk storage operations. So, moving on to the Q&A part. So there are some questions uh, by your audience. Here, uh, the there are several questions. Uh, the first question is, how does an effective material handling system contribute to overall operational efficiency? Okay, an effective material handling system contributes to overall operational efficiency in several ways. Reduce downtime, improve productivity, optimized space utilization, enhanced work safety, and obviously cost saving will be there, faster order fulfillment, flexibility and scalability, and also the last uh, is improved uh, supply chain visibility. So the second question here is, uh, are there any emerging technologies influencing the future of material handling? Okay, so yes, several emerging technologies are influencing the future of material handling. So the first one is automation and robotics. So the use of autonomous mobile robots or we can say AMRs, uh, robotics arms and automated guided vehicles, AGVs is increasing for tasks such as picking, packing and transporting goods within the all. Then IoT, Internet of Things. IoT sensors are being incorporated into material handling equipment and storage system to provide real time data on inventory levels, equipment health and operational efficiency. Then augmented reality and virtual reality, AR and VR. AR and VR technologies are being used to enhance training programs for material handling operations, material handling operators, improve order picking accuracy and provide visual assistance in complex tasks. Then predictive analytics is also one of the factor. Advanced analytics and machine learning algorithms are employed to predict equipment maintenance needs, optimize inventory level and enhance overall decision making in material handling operations. And the third question is what challenges are commonly associated with material handling and how can they be mitigated? OK, so uh, common challenges associated with the material handling includes uh, if we talk about this, then the first one is inefficient layouts. So in case of inefficient layouts, the first challenge will be poorly designed layouts can lead to congestion and inefficiency. And for that uh, mitigation will be. Uh, we can optimize layout design for smooth material flow and considered implementing automation to reduce bottlenecks. And uh, next is worker safety, which is. Definitely more important. Uh, the challenge will be manual material handling poses risk of injuries and for that uh, I will say mitigation will be invest in ergonomic equipment, provide trainings and implement safety protocols. Automation can also reduce the need for manual lifting. So the next one is inventory management. Uh, in case of inventory management, the challenge will be uh, inaccurate inventory data can lead to stock outs or overstocking. And for that, uh, I will say mitigation will be uh, implement real time tracking system, barcode scanning and automated inventory management solution for improved accuracy. So. Thank you everyone for being part of today's webinar. Your engagement questions and participation made it a valuable session. We appreciate your time and look forward to connecting with you again in the future. Thank you once again and have a wonderful day.